all the characters we have in the New Testament, Mary is probably the most mysterious one. Because I would say we make a lot of assumption about her. Uh, from tradition, from theology, from many things. Because if you ask people who was Mary, especially at, in the, um, the birth of Jesus part of the story, people will s probably tell you that she's a teenager, she's young, maybe naive, clueless, docile, submissive to God's wishes. And it's interesting because this is not exactly what we find in the text. Once again, if we go back, especially in the Gospel according to Luke, uh, we have the angel Gabriel that shows up in our lives and assume that she's afraid. <laughs> and because he says, the, the, well, the angel says, don't be afraid. And then give the message. Uh, and the task ahead of her and, and leave. But once again, when we look at the text, Mary seems to be surprised, perplexed, but not afraid. No, 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 no. What she wants is, is to understand what's going on and how things are going to work before she can make her decision to the message, to the call she received through the angel. And yes, she decides. Sometimes we we say, oh, Mary did not have a choice. And no, she, she decides. And in the same or similar ways of prophets of the Old Testament, she's called to do something very important, but nowhere she's forced to do it. Of course, most likely she do, she does not fully understand what's ahead of her. Um, like I would say, like when we decide to begin a family, well, we have an idea what having a child would be, but it's really when you have that child in your arm and you're that you really understand what it is. It's just this big transition. Of course, it's the same. Something also that she understood and have a clue about is how our society was reacting and behaving toward on on the wed mother and that she knew she knew that there was no uh, glory no no happy ending maybe because she probably see it all around her oh she was chosen by God yeah and she had to make that decision. And the amazing part is that she said yes. Because that's not a given, like I said. It's saying yes to a very challenging life. And still she said yes. And for us today is to asking ourselves in a difficult situation, in a similar situation, would we have the courage to say yes, like Mary did long ago? And I say courage because it's so easy to say no, to close herself, to think about herself exclusively and, and to, to refuse anything that might be unsettling. It takes courage to open our mind, our soul, our art, to the unforeseen, to new potential, to opportunities. And Mary in this way became an example for all of us who are, I'm assuming, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I know about me, ordinary people, nothing spectacular, nothing that, you know, say that we will do something amazing. And then this opportunity show itself. And we are reminded that we too can say yes, we can do amazing things with the help of God. All does it takes sometimes is 
to say as Mary, here I am. Here I am, life. Let it be with me according to your word, God. Let it be. And that's what I hope you will be able to discover in the next few days as we work walking to this time of Christmas, this time when we remember the birth of Jesus. That seemed almost too good to be true, <laughs> impossible to believe. Would we have the courage to say, yes, that's it for today. I remain Stéphane Vermet, the lectionary man. Until next time, well, I want to wish you Merry Christmas, take care of yourself, and hopefully see you in 2018. Bye-bye.